today we're going to talk about the complex analysis version of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And this is something that ties together two important concepts. One is the notion of an antiderivative for a complex valued function, and the other is the notion of a contour integral being path independent. So here's the breakdown for antiderivatives. If you're given a function f that's continuous on some domain d, another function g of z is what we call an antiderivative or a primitive of the function f if g of z is itself analytic and the function's derivative equals the given function f. Note, however, that any function of the form g of z plus some fixed complex number a is also an antiderivative of the function f because it satisfies these two criteria. Now that we know what an antiderivative is, we can actually state the fundamental theorem of calculus. So once again, you need a function f that's continuous on some domain d, and the function f in this case has a primitive that we'll call g of z, and we're going to take gamma, a smooth path in the domain connecting any two points a and b, then the contour integral over gamma of the function f, which of course can be written as the integral over gamma of f of z dz, equals the antiderivative g at b minus the antiderivative g at a. Immediately we see one of the implications of this theorem. It doesn't care about the shape of the contour. Gamma could be any smooth curve. What matters is the function f being continuous and the existence of its antiderivative. It also means something else, something quite neat, that if you have the contour integral over a closed contour C of a function f that's continuous and has an antiderivative, then the right-hand side would be g evaluated at some point minus g evaluated at the same point, meaning that this is always going to be zero. So we conclude that the existence of an antiderivative implies the independence of path of the contour integral, which is extremely cool, so cool that we need a proof for it. Now the proof is actually pretty simple. All we need is the fact that the derivative of g equals the function f, which implies that dg equals f of z dz. So the contour integral over gamma of f of z dz equals the contour integral over gamma of dg. Now what exactly is the function g? g here is a complex valued function g of z. And we know that we can treat complex-valued functions as functions of the real and imaginary parts of their arguments. So we could write g here as g of x and y, where x and y are respectively the real and imaginary parts of the complex variable z. And we know that z is analytic, so that means we can write dg as partial g by partial x dx plus partial g by partial y dy in a familiar way from multivariable calculus. And if you're concerned with the fact that g here is a complex valued function rather than a real valued multivariable function, well, recall that we can write any complex valued function as its imaginary part u of xy plus i times the imaginary part v of xy and u and v here are real valued functions of x and y. And because g here is analytic, we know that u and v are both differentiable functions in the MVC sense. So we could take du and dv and then piece together the result by writing du plus i times dv. You'll get exactly the same result as here once you collect the dx and the dy terms together. So yeah, this result is perfectly cool. And it implies that the integral over gamma sorts out to the integral over gamma of replacing dg by the mess on the right-hand side. So we have partial g by partial x dx plus partial g by partial y dy. And wait a minute, we know how to parameterize contours, right? We can write z here equal to gamma of t, where t lies between a and b, where t equal to a corresponds to the point a in the domain, and t equal to b corresponds to the point b in the domain. And that has implications for the differential elements dx and dy as well because now we can write x here as a function of t, and the same goes for y, which means that dx equals x dot dt, where I'm using dots to denote 
differentiation with respect to t, and dy equals y dot dt. So now the integral over gamma is an integral with respect to t evaluated from t equals a to t equals b of partial g by partial x, x dot plus partial g by partial y, y dot. And now to expand the x dot and y dot terms, we have the integral from a to b of partial g by partial x dx by dt plus partial g by partial y dy by dt. And immediately we recognize that the integrand can be expressed using the multivariable chain rule as the derivative with respect to t of g of t. Okay, cool. And we know exactly what this would sort out to, right? This would be equal to the function g evaluated at t equal to b minus the function g evaluated at t equal to a. And this is, of course, g of b minus g of a. So we see that the existence of an antiderivative function implies independence of path. The result is true for any contour connecting the points a and b in the domain d. But wait a minute, what if the contour is only piecewise smooth? Well, in the last video, I said that those cases are no problem whatsoever. We know exactly how to deal with them. If you have a curve gamma that's piecewise smooth, meaning that you can break it down into a number of smooth curves, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, all the way up to gamma n, and these curves connect the points a naught, a1, a2, all the way up to a n, a naught here being the point A and A n being the point B, then the integral over gamma can be expressed as a sum over k from 1 to n of the integrals over gamma sub k. And because each gamma sub k is a smooth curve, we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to it. So the integral over gamma of f of z dz in this case equals the sum over k from 1 to n of the integrals over gamma sub k of f of z dz. Now applying FTC to each one of these curves gives us on the right hand side, for the first curve we would have g at a1 minus g at a naught, which is just a, plus g at a2 minus g at a1, plus, and so on and so forth, we would have, by the end of it, g at b minus g at a n minus 1. So we see some lovely cancellations taking place here, where the g at a1 goes away, the g at a2 will go away similarly, and everything just cancels out until we're left with only g of b minus g g at b minus g at a. Okay, cool. So it works for piecewise smooth curves as well. Now what about the converse question? Does the independence of path of some contour integral imply the existence of an antiderivative or the function we're integrating? If that is true, it would be extremely cool. So let's investigate this a bit more. The integral over the contour gamma of f of z dz can be written in a different manner if we expand dz as dx plus i times dy, in other words, in its real and imaginary part form. So the integral sorts out to the integral over gamma of f dx plus i f dy, and let's pause for a moment and look at exactly what we have here. We have some continuous complex valued function dx plus some continuous complex valued function dy. So we're interested in a differential form of p dx plus q dy, where both p and q are continuous complex valued functions. So we're going to detract just a little bit from the discussion we were having and talk about differentials for just a little while. And then we're going to see how the talk of differentials 
neatly ties everything together. The particular type of differential we're interested in here is an exact differential. Now, what exactly makes a differential exact? Well, if you can find a holomorphic function g such that g, dg equals pdx plus qdy, then this differential would be what we call exact. Okay, cool. Now, we know exactly what an exact differential is, and let's now paint an integral picture of exactly what we know so far. Let me just switch to the color white. We have PDX plus QDY. Let's say that this thing here is an exact differential, meaning that we can write it as the differential of some holomorphic function G. And let's integrate over the contour gamma. Well, we know exactly what the right-hand side in April would sort out to. That would be g at the end point. Let's call it b minus g at the initial point. Let's call it a. Okay, but wait a minute. If I just take this thing in the middle and call g prime f, then that means that dg equals f of z dz, where f is a continuous function by virtue of g being holomorphic. So that means what we have here is the integral over the contour gamma of f of z dz. So let me just try and join the dots here, and let's try and draw some conclusions. The first thing we notice here is the connection between the function f having a primitive and the integral of f being the integral of an exact differential the whole integral painting of ours, means that these two are equivalent. Exactly the same thing. But we know that the function having a primitive implies the independence of path of the contour integral. So that means if you have the integral over gamma of an exact differential, that would obviously be independent of path. So the question here is whether or not the converse is true. If we can prove that the independence of path of an integral means that the integral can be expressed as an integral of an exact differential form, then that would be exactly the same thing as saying that the function has a primitive, and hence our problem would be solved. Everything would be proved, and everyone would be happy. But of course that could lead to additional complications, like for math majors, what does it even mean to be happy? What does it even mean? Anyway, now for the proof. Let's assume that this integral here is independent of path. And again, we have functions P and Q being com uh, continuous complex valued functions on some domain D. And the first thing you want to do here is fix some point A in that domain and define a function g of b as the integral from a to b of p dx plus q dy. And because the integral is independent of path, it doesn't matter which contour you choose to go from a to b. The value of the integral would stay the same, as in the function here is well defined. Now let's make use of this function. We're going to choose another point, x naught, y naught, belonging to d, and evaluate the function at g of x, y naught, where x is, of course, different from x naught. And we'll use the contour consisting of the smooth path connecting a to the point x naught, y naught, and then the horizontal line leading to x, y naught. So g of x, y naught can be expressed as the integral from a to x naught, y naught of p dx plus q dy plus the integral. Now, this is a horizontal line, so that means dy would be 0. And this integral can be expressed as the integral from x, to, uh, from x naught to x of p of t, y naught, dt. Now let's analyze what we've cooked up so far. 
we have this integral, which is just a constant because the points a and x0, y0 are fixed in our setting. So that means what we have here is a function of x. And we can differentiate partially with respect to x to get partial g by partial x evaluated at x, y0 equal to this integral being a constant evaluates to zero when we take the derivative. And for the second integral, we would have p at x, y0. And because this is true for an arbitrary point x0, y0, it implies that partial g by partial x as a function of x and y equals the function p of x, y. Similarly, we can prove that partial g by partial y evaluated as a function of x and y is the function q of x and y, which is extremely cool because that means the differential form p dx plus q dy equals partial g by partial x dx plus partial g by partial y dy, which is the differential of g. And again, this is awesome because in the integral form, it means we have the integral over the contour gamma of p dx plus q dy equal to the integral over gamma of dg. But wait a minute, we know that this integral can be expressed as the integral over gamma of a continuous complex valued function f of z. And that means we have this equality, which is valid for any contour in the domain d, implying that the derivative of g equals the function f. So indeed, the function f has a primitive this is extremely cool. So, independence of path and the existence of a primitive are both equivalent. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. See you next week for another complex analysis video. Thank you. See you next time.